In this recording, we look at determining whether two lines in three-dimensional space intersect or not, and if so, where. So we're going to consider a line through the points A and B as shown, and a second line through points C and D as shown, and see if those two lines intersect. And let's call a line through A and B line 1, and the other one line 2. And we should start by getting the vector equations and hence then the scalar parametric equations of each line. And remember that when we're finding a vector equation of a straight line, that is of the form R equals C plus TA, where R is the position vector of a general point on the line, C is the position vector of a specific point on the line, T is a parameter, and A is a vector in the direction of a line. So for line 1, for instance, the point C, which is on the line, we could pick OA, for instance, the position vector of A, which will become I plus 4J minus 2K here, while the vector AB will be in the direction of this line. And that's just worked out as the position vector OB minus position vector OA, which in this case will thus be 3i plus 8j plus 6k minus i plus 4j minus 2k. And hence the vector in the direction of the line AB is 2i plus 4j plus 8k in this case. Hence, putting those two bits of information together, the equation of line 1 will be R equals I plus 4J minus 2K plus T times 2I plus 4J plus 8K. But in turn, since R is just the position vector of a general point on the line, that can be rewritten xi plus yj plus zk and on the right hand side grouping i, j and k terms we get 1 plus 2t times i plus 4 plus 4t times j plus negative 2 plus 8t times k and thus for line 1 it follows that the parametric equations are x equals 1 plus 2t, y equals 4 plus 4t, z equals negative 2 plus 8t. And we'll return to these parametric equations shortly. So for line 2, once again we start by getting position vector of a specific point on the line. So we could use OC for instance, is 0i plus 4j plus 8k. And then to get the vector a in the direction of the line, that will be cd, which is od, which was 6i plus 10j minus 10k, minus oc, which is 0i plus 4j plus 8k. And hence cd works out to be equal to 6i plus 6j minus 18k. Now, in this case, once again we could use the form C plus TA, but for convenience I'm actually going to use another parameter S here, for reasons that will soon become clear. So R in this case will be of form 0i plus 4j plus 8k plus s times 6i plus 6j minus 18k. So we now want to find the scalar parametric equations of this second line. And once again, remembering that R is xi plus yj plus zk, then x is going to be the coefficient of the i components on the right-hand side. 
that is x is 0 plus 6s, which is just x equals 6s, while y will be the coefficients of the j terms, so that will be 4 plus 6s, and z will be the coefficients of the k terms, which will be 8 minus 18s. So in summary, these are the scalar parametric equations of the two lines we're looking at. And we're interested to see whether these lines intersect. If they do intersect, there must be some point where the x, y and z values coincide for the two lines. And that means that 1 plus 2t must be equal to 6s, for instance. And for convenience, I'll just write that the other way around here as 6s equals 1 plus 2t. Similarly, the y coordinates must coincide at that point. So 4 plus 6s equals 4 plus 4t. And matching up the z expressions, 8 minus 18s is equal to negative 2 plus 8t. So we need to solve these three simultaneous equations in the two unknowns s and t. And if these equations have a consistent solution, the lines intersect. If not, they do not intersect. And a good method for doing this is using Gaussian elimination. So we therefore need to start by writing all the variables on one side and the constants on the other. So the first equation will become 6s minus 2t equal to 1. The second one will rearrange to 6s minus 4t equals 4 minus 4 is 0. And the third one will rearrange to negative 18s minus 8t equals negative 2 minus 8, which becomes negative 10. So we start off by putting those into our augmented matrix for the Gaussian elimination. So 6, negative 2, and then the constant in the first line is 1, 6, negative 4, 0, and for the third line, negative 18, negative 8, negative 10. And because it's Gaussian elimination, we can think about the diagonal that starts from the top left corner, which will be here. Everything below that diagonal we want to make 0. In other words, these three elements down here are the ones we want to make 0. So let's do row operations to get zeros in the first column in both row 2 and row 3. So the first row stays the same. The next one, R2 minus R1 will give us a correct result because 6 minus 6 is 0. Negative 4 minus negative 2 will become negative 2 and 0 minus 1 will become negative 1. While in the third row, again using a multiple of row 1 with it to get 0, that will be row 3 to get negative 18 plus 18. That will be row 3 plus 3 row 1. So 0. Then the next one, negative 8 plus 3 times negative 2 becomes negative 14. Negative 10 plus 3 times 1 becomes negative 7. Now all that remains is to make this element a 0. So rewriting the rest of our tableau to start with. We'll need to use a multiple of row 2, add or subtract a multiple of row 2 to get a 0, so that this other 0 does not change. So that's going to be, in fact, row 3 minus 7 row 2 to get the negative 14 plus 14 as required. So 0 minus 7 times 0 is 0. Negative 14 minus 7 times negative 2 is 0. And lastly, negative 7 minus 7 times negative 1. That one also works out to be 0 here. So now let's write out our final equations from this final tableau. So remembering that our first column was the coefficients of s and the second column was the coefficients of t, the first line of that final tableau tells us that 6s 
minus 2t equals 1. The next line, the second line, tells us negative 2t equals negative 1. The final line tells us 0s plus 0t equals 0. In other words, that final line is just telling us 0 equals 0. That is a true statement. So that line is redundant. But it's worth noting that the fact that that is a true statement and that these equations also look reasonable indicates the two lines do intersect at a point. Whereas if we had got a contradictory statement with a non-zero number on the right-hand side of this dividing line, such as 0 equals 5, that would mean, in fact, that there was no consistent solution to the equations and that the lines would not have intersected. But now we can simply solve these. Negative 2t equals negative 1. That implies that t equals negative 1 divided by negative 2, which is just a half. And then substituting that back into our first equation gives us 6s minus 2 times a half is equal to 1, which becomes 6s minus 1 is 1, therefore 6s is equal to 2. And in turn, it therefore follows that s is equal to 1 third. And the final step now, we can either pick our x, y and z coordinates that were expressed in terms of s and substitute in s equals one third, which is what I'll now do, or equivalently we could have looked back at our scalar parametric equations for x, y and z in terms of t and substituted in t equals a half. But here I'll demonstrate using s, either one will give the same thing, x was equal to 6s, so that's just 6 lots of a third, which is equal to 2 y was 4 plus 6s, so 4 plus 6 times a third, which gives 4 plus 2 is 6. And z was 8 minus 18s, so that is 8 minus 18 times a third, which works out to be 2. Therefore, finally, we can see that the point of intersection of the two lines has coordinates 2, 6, 2. So that is an example of working out the point of intersection of two lines, including determining for sure that they intersect.